Now if we look, I'm targeting fish. This is what we're gonna try. These fish are about anywhere from 15 to 20 foot deep. And that's my 2D. And you can see them on my down image. And over here, if you look, go on town. This is the river channel that goes right here. And here's where it splits right over in here. So we're still in a river channel. That's what we're concentrating on the river channel. And the reason we're tight lining is because if you look at the mess, long line troll, and I love the long line troll, but you can't long line troll in mess like this. Now looking at my setup, I've got my 14 foot, these are my regular 14 foot, my adjustable rod holders. Boy, look at the trash on this lake. And I've got the longer T-bar. There's my base plates. Because I got to get over this son of a gun right here. But that's fine. It actually works out pretty good for an old man anyway. So that's my setup. And I got it where I can... You know, I've got some waypoints down here. Then I've got my 2D. Then I've got my live scope. See, there's some fish swimming around at 18 foot deep. And that's what we're targeting. Let's see what we can do with them. I got, I don't know what it is. I believe it's a little one. Old white fish. I ain't much to them on this side of the country. Once in a while you get a good now. Out in the Midwest and all, y'all get some nice white fish. Most of ours are skinny. They're long and skinny. And you, you can see through them son of a guns. Boy, he wouldn't come off. But I was telling you about... You know, I got to... Uh, oh, come on! It ain't gonna be no good day. Buying this equipment. I was talking to one of my buddies the other day. We was crying about everything being so inexpensive and all this stuff. Oh, God almighty! I absolutely cannot fish. Ah, but me and my buddy, we were talking. I mean, that's eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 feet. I'm going to try that. Me and my buddy was talking, and a lot of you fellas that even watch this, y'all do not even remember that the only thing we had to fish with was a flasher. That was bag, old 95. 90s to 95s, you know, something like that. Then they started getting the 2Ds. And my first first really good one I had, I had a Hummingbird 2000. It didn't have but two knobs on that thing. One for depth and one for sensitivity. And that was the best unit. I'm telling you, simple. I saw a gun did not lie when it comes to marking fish. Then Lawrence hits the market. I mean, Lawrence had the best flasher in the world. And some people I know still use flashers. I mean, those things are really good. They, they don't lie either. They'll mark a fish. But, you know, in the 2000, you know, it started getting on Rants 87s, 85s. That was the hot unit. That was about $500 then. Then here comes the GPS. Where it used to be when you marked a brush pile, you lined it up between that pier and that telephone pole over yonder somewhere, and you went in there and you found it. Couldn't nobody find it. Well, then the GPS come along, and you could take your GPS, and you could hide your brush then. Because all they had to find it was that old 2D. And they could find some 
but you could pretty well hide from them pretty good and you had it made. So then everybody everybody had to get that GPS and they were that was a really good invention. Then guess what? Here comes the down image and that was pretty but you didn't gain that much. Then I think it might have been Lorenz. They all started about the same time. The side image. First they had that little seven inch hummingbird had the seven. Lorenz had the seven. And uh, they were pretty high. You'd get them about a thousand bucks. But you thought you was just, I mean, you thought you was the cat daddy when you had one. So then you had to have that. Then you got upgrades. Then you got upgrades. You got the 12-inch screens. And now, I mean, you could literally see anything you want. You know, the live scopes out. Everybody's got that going on now. And it's rough on an old man to do that stuff. It's, it's just hard for us to afford that crap. And and here's the funny thing about it. Oh, y'all young boy, everybody's getting them things. Everybody's got to have it. They got to have this. But the bad part of it, here's, here's the thing that really will trip your gizzard right here, baby, is a lot of us old men, we could buy 10 of them if we wanted to. But we got better sense. We worked too hard for our money. And... Uh, we just hate to part with it as we get older like that. And but these young guys, they're going to have that son of a gun. They're going to have that big fast speed boat, that big motor, that big truck. You know, and like I said, they're going to pay for that thing. And they just going to pay for that thing and wait till the mama leaves them. Or mama runs them off. Then she's going to get half of it. They got to buy that half. So it's going to take you about 30 years before you can get settled down and realize some of the stupid stuff you've done. Looks like I got a beast here. He feels pretty good. Ho, 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 ho. That's a good... Now what I had to do, I started... This channel splits right there, and it was so trashy. So I moved over here to the main channel. This channel, it's a little bit more clear, and I'm actually marking a few more fish. And and that's all I'm doing. I'm just fishing this channel, seeing what I can come up with. There's not a whole bunch of fish out here, but, you know, That's pretty good right there. That's a yellow jacket, black and yellow, spinny mini. Ha ha ha. Pretty good fish. Might hold on to him a little bit. I might eat a few after a while. Get back in the water. I still got my mana. Yes, I'll use a mana. And like I said, as a rule of thumb, stop it. As a rule of thumb, like I said, I like to fish the river. That's where these fish get in that river. But now, before you see an in haters, before you see an in haters, that don't believe nothing you hear, this is this particular lake. This lake has a river channel. Not all lakes have a river channel. Not all fish on all lakes. And a prime example, for instance, the one up above, uh, the lake up above, you know, this, there's fish back there now in the very back. Uh, of a creek but it's 20 foot deep back through there and that creek is two miles long so pretty well those are local fish they actually never leave that creek they go in and out and in and out in this particular time of year they migrate back in there and uh, chasing the bait and stuff like that but as a rule of thumb if your fish if your lake has a river channel 
get in that river channel and just see what they'll do. Fish the intersections. Let me put this thing up. I don't think there's nothing to this. He's a little junker. This one ain't. I might have another beast. He's a pretty good one. come off of snow cone. That's a good one. Pretty fish. Dozens of junker. But it's fish in the river. But let me tell you, the reason the reason I'm tight lining it's simply because I like to fish all kinds of fish. I love the tight line. I love the long line. I love fishing dock, yeah, fishing brush, live scoping. Don't get me wrong, I like live scoping, but it ain't my number one forte. Cause I'm just, I'm a little bit lazy. I'm a lazy budded fisherman. Cause I can sit out here. That's yellow jacket again. I can sit out here on a pretty day when the boat traffic ain't up and down the river. And it's not bad right now because it is wintertime, deer season's in and all that. Okay, three quarters, 13 ounces. Ah, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's bigger than that. Maybe 14 ounces. But I like to do this. Cause you can get out here on a day where it's pretty. And now the day's a gorgeous day, the wind ain't blowing. But I can sit back and I can just relax. Going down about 14. Then to me like I'm catching about 14. But I can, uh, where am I at? I can just sit back, cross my legs, eat a cracker. And I can do this all day long. Whereas standing up throwing that jig, I ain't gonna do that. All right, I'm gonna sit down if I do it. But a lot of people thinks when you, especially when you watch YouTube and stuff like that, that this is a dying way of fishing tight line. Let me tell you, fads come and go. 
technology, I mean, it's here to stay. But tight lining, no. I mean, tight lining is always going to be here. Especially when you get, of course, I'm going to leave this world one day. But even younger people, they love the tight line. Everybody has their own way of fishing. I like them all. But I love to get out here and sit back, you know, and just sit back and relax and just fish and I can talk to y'all. So now let's go fishing again. I don't know, it's fish. It's a junker. Junker. This might be a no. It might be a piece of junk. Thing always when you get a fish cut your motor off because these son of a guns will run up under the boat especially if you get a big fish that's the first place they head is up under the boat so always cut your motor off he's good eating fish But always cut your motor off. And I get asked all oh, that son of a gun. I get asked a lot how fast I'm going. I'm doing a point two, point three. Generally, I like to do a four or even a five if I'm just covering ground because these fish are just scattered. But there's so much trash in the water that I've got to slow down so I can try to maneuver around the trash and stuff. Just a little hint. Well, if I needed fish to eat, we would, we'd have a pretty good mess to eat. That's on Mr. Snow Cone. So, I want to wrap it up. But I still love fish. Uh-oh.
See that? Whoa. I might have another brand in here. Whoa. Come on, baby. Old spinny mini. And 14 foot rods. You can't beat them. Yellow jacket. Now that, that's a good one right there. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's a good one, but we letting him go. Might be pretty good. He's all right. Come on. Let's go, Brandon. Get up here. Come on. Oh, whoa. Uh-oh. He ain't no Brandon. But he's a good one. He's a real good eater. That's Mr. Smurf. I love my Smitty Minis now. Trying to get away. Okay. Now. Blue and yellow. He wouldn't have come loose in three days. God. Got to get him out like this. That's a pretty good one right there. Big long old sucker. But I reckon. Now, don't keep him if you can't eat him. You know, there ain't enough on these lakes to go around anyway now, seems like. So if he really. Just take out enough that you can eat. Because if you like most of us, we fish most all the time anyway. But I reckon, I don't know, we probably got enough to do a video. So we'll probably wrap it up here. But 
you know, if I can help you, like I said, these tight lining rods, spinning minis, just give me, a, you know, give me a shout out, www.southerncrappyrods.com, and I'm Ed, and I'll see you on the next one.